In this video, we are going to learn one of the most useful tools that Lua plugins have to offer, and that's loops. Loops, just like you would expect, allow you to run a piece of code until a certain condition is satisfied. And it's like the loops you can build into your sequences, which allow you to repeat playback of a specific set of cues indefinitely or by setting a loop count. With loops in Lua, it's pretty similar. So they will repeat lines of code, but the way that they decide whether or not to keep looping is not only bound to numbers, uh, but instead, like with the if then else and if else statements, you have the full power of logical expression at your disposal. And actually three different kinds of loops that we are going to see in our example. So let's jump into the code and first up uh, copy and paste the example code over into the show file. And then uh, let's take a look at what the main function does as a next step. So first um, I wanna show you what this does. So um, let's just go over here, call this loops. Hit save. All right. So the way that this uh, script works is that we select a number of fixtures, and then we run this um, code. And what's interesting is the target executor that it's asking for here. If I just enter nothing, then it will keep asking me until it gets a value. So in this case, I'm going to enter 1.3, this empty executor here that I want to use. And now next up with the selected fixtures. Um, in that case, I had nine fixtures selected and it actually creates nine different queues here. And essentially what it does is we can see here, you know, it always sort of creates another, um, it kind of goes through all the fixtures and then creates one um, queue where the currently selected fixture is actually at 100%. And then, um, you know, essentially it creates the sequence where it always has a different, a different um, fixture lit up essentially. So let's take a look at the plugin and let's take a look at the main function of the plugin to figure out how it works. And we I can identify that main function of the plugin by taking a look at which function gets returned, right? So if we kind of scroll down here and it says return main, I know that's our convention, but we also saw that you can have different names. That's perfectly fine. So in this case, it's the main function. And uh, if we take a look at this here, we can see that um, we first run this function, get non empty user input here, and then we actually get the fixture count by reading out this show variable selected fixtures count. All right. And then essentially we create this sequence and it's kind of interesting. I'm going to show you the first type of uh, loop with this function, the second type of loop with um, this create sequence while function, and then the third kind of loop with this create sequence for function. And let's just step through those three things. So yeah, this first function, the get non empty user input, let's take a look at this function uh, because it's a great example for the first type of loop that I want to show you. The idea of this function should be pretty clear. We saw it earlier. We want to make sure that the user actually enters a value instead of just hitting enter or please. And um, we are sort of left without an input there. So what we do in this function is we ask the user for the same input until they enter something. And this is where we meet our first loop type, the repeat until loop. And one of the most important things to note here is that I almost never use this kind of loop. Um, so we're meeting the least common one first, actually. And um, this loop is uh, special because it will run the code between the repeat and the until statement. So this code over here, it will run that uh, code at least once before evaluating the until condition and deciding whether or not it should um, repeat the loop execution. So this execution is repeated as long as the condition is not true. And in our case, we will repeat the code execution until the user input is not empty anymore. But keep in mind that the condition to keep the loop running or not um, is actually only you know, evaluated once after the code has been running already. So this is perfect. We of course want to get some input first up and then kind of check it um, to see if we need to get going. 
Um, and also, you know, keep in mind the conditions here, they have the same format as the if then else and else if operator. So you can also combine them by using the end keyword or the or keyword and also put fancy um, brackets around it, right? Um, yeah, so in general, this is, this loop type is something I almost never use, but in this rare case, it's actually quite useful. And um, again, you know, we use the not equal uh, operator here. So as long as the user input, um, no, in this case is actually a little different. So until the user input is not equal, um, I mean, as long as the user input is not equal the, the empty um, string here, we keep going with this thing. All right, to understand the next um, two kinds of loops, I actually created a helper function. So in this case, we're adding, um, we can add a step to an executor. We can see here, we have a target executor number, a queue number, and essentially what it does is it uses um, the next um, functionality of the console to actually sort of step through the fixtures of a selection, right? So this is really just a helper function. Um, and this is a great example of when to use a function, whenever you use a certain piece of code um, somewhere multiple times, um, you know, if you use it two or three times in a, in a given um, part of your plugin, then it's worth it to probably create a function for it. So you can see here, it just triggers a bunch of MA2 commands, which by looking at it, um, you should be able to figure out what it does, right? Let's take a look at the while loop in the create sequence while function. The while loop should also be pretty self-explanatory as it runs the code while the condition that you specify is true. So if the condition is false, right from the start, the code inside the loop uh, is actually never run. So um, let's take a look here. And yeah, we can see here, you know, current, current Q is at one. And then if the fixture count, um, you know, essentially, we kind of we kind of want to count this up to sort of exceed the fixture count. So in general, the fixture count, if it's 10, then of course, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We sort of execute this, um, you know, until this is sort of, um, you know, exceeding the fixture count. Now, what's a little tricky with while loops is that you can actually end up with an infinite loop in case the condition that you check for. Uh, to decide whether or not to keep going with the loop and never changes. So in this case, you know, what I might forget every now and then is actually to increase this current Q count. Um, and in that case, it would never exceed the fixture count. And then uh, you will actually end up with an infinitely running plugin. Now, let's just take a look at actually what this looks like in practice. So. Um, Let's just go back here and we already executed this code, right? So when we scroll back here, we can see the output. Um, so we always see sort of looping number and then adding Q for executor 1.3 and Q1. Um, we can see that. We can see that right here. So um, in this loop execution, we actually always display the current Q number and then um, you know, in this add step function, we actually specify which um, target executor number and queue number we're creating in that case. And having this kind of output really helps you figure out very fast um, whether or not your um, code is running correctly because you kind of look through this here and it tells you what it does, right? So in that case, um, if you had an endless loop, it would always go looping one, looping one, looping one, looping one. In that case, just go off your plugin. All right, we'll see in just a second a better way to do this, to, to actually, um, you know, uh, work with numbers that you want to count up. And uh, you know what? Another thing that makes working with loops a little tricky at first is that, um, you know, the, the way that you uh, specify the condition. So in this case, the condition is while current Q smaller than fixture count, uh, run the add step function. That's what we do here. So let's say that we have 10 fixtures. Um, 
this loop also create 10 queues as we would expect it. When we think about 10 fixtures, that's a little hard to say. So let's actually think out loud what happens when we have two fixtures. In that case, the first loop would run because the initial value of current queue is one and one is smaller than two, which makes the condition true and the code inside the loop is run. When we then increase the current queue count though, and all of a sudden the current queue is two, and two is not smaller than two. Now we skip over the loop and, you know, like that, um, end this part of the process. That also means that we now only create that one queue instead of two, even though we have two fixtures selected. And that's a challenge that I find pretty often with loops. I tend to get the condition slightly wrong so that oftentimes they run one less time than what I need. So always make sure to double check if the amount of times your loop uh, runs is actually correct and you can use a small example or just write the conditions down on a piece of paper to think about whether or not the loop count is correct. In this case let's change it to a smaller or equal to fixture count condition to fix this bug. So we actually want this like so. So let's just copy this over and now let's just select this one over here select and i'm going to go ahead and just um, off this one and then i'm going to just select those two fixtures and then run the plugin again this is 1.4 and now we can see that we actually have two cues and that's exactly what we wanted all right, lastly, let's take a look at the for loop, which is one of the most commonly used loop types for me personally. The for loop takes care of the counting for you and it has two to three options which you can specify. Um, so let's take a look at those. So let's comment this one out to actually run the for loop that we want to have. Um, essentially, these two functions do the same thing. All right, just keep that in mind. So the first thing in the for statement is this current, um, this local variable, which is created for this loop. So in this case, it's actually local, even though we don't need the local keyword in this case. But you always make sure to assign a value to that loop variable that you create. And in this case, we um, you know, saw in the while loop that we start with the first queue, of course, and so we choose one as the starting value here. The second option, separated by a comma, is the end count for that for loop that we want to end up with. What's important to keep in mind here is that the loop keeps running as long as the value of the looping variable is smaller than the condition. So this has us run into the same problem as before. We create one last queue than we actually wanted to. So in this case, we can simply fix that by making the fixture count um, one larger than it actually is. So in this case, uh, what we can do is actually go fixture count plus one. And then essentially what it does is it sort of runs the same loop um, with the same add step function. And then one last thing that you should know about in the for loop is actually you can also specify another value here and that's sort of the amount that it um, that the value is increased every time you run the loop. So in this case, you could also have uh, a 10, for example, to sort of uh, go, you know, fixture one, fixture 10, fixture 20. So that's something um, that you want to use, for example, for multi-instance fixtures. Um, you can either specify a number here or, I don't know, um, go like, you know, fixture instance, count and then have the user enter that before but that's optional all you need actually is the uh, starting value and then the end value and then you're good to go and that's loops in lua for you um there's more things to say about loops there's um ways for example to end the execution of a loop prematurely using the break statement and the way that for loops are run also has some specifics that might cause you some problems if you don't know how this loop works uh, for all that, I actually encourage you to read up on those loops a little more and Google whenever you have a question 
um, or problem in that area. Overall loops, however, are pretty simple to use once you use them once or twice and they offer you a lot of power in writing incredibly helpful plugins.